Hey DIYers, I'm George from Alarm Grid. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to learn in a Versa GE sensor with an IQ2 Plus panel. Now, before you go ahead and start learning your sensor, you want to make sure that first of all you have the correct IQ2 Plus panel because there's about six different ones and that you have the correct sensor. So the IQ2, the IQ2 Plus panel that you have, there's about six different ones. The one that you're going to want to use is the one that has a 319.5 daughter board card built in. So it's the Interlogix and Qolsys daughter board card built in. There's two other ones that have Honeywell and 2GIG legacy daughter board cards. There's two other ones that have DSC legacy daughter board cards. But the ones that you want are going to be one of the two that have the Interlogix and Qolsys daughter board card built into it. Now they do have uh, the reason I'm saying there's two different ones is because uh, there's an AT&T or a Verizon one. So uh, you just want to make sure that you just have the IQ2 Plus that has the Interlogix and Qolsys daughter board card or else this sensor will not work with your system. And when I go into the programming screen, I'll show you how to confirm that you have the correct panel as well. Um, now this Versa Interlogix sensor it transmits at a 319.5 megahertz frequency, which is what Interlogic sensors and most Quosa sensors work at. Um, there are two other versions of this Versa sensor. There's the 5800 Mini, which is the Honeywell version of the Versa. And then there's the Versa 2 gig sensor, which is, um, again, the same sensor, just intended for 2 gig panels. The Honeywell one, the 5800 Mini, is also a Versa sensor, just intended for Honeywell systems. Um, now, the one way to tell what sensor you have, if you already have them installed in the house, if you moved into it and they're already there, is you'll actually, if you pop the cover, you'll see that the daughter board card on the inside is a different color. So for the Interlogix uh, one, they're actually blue, but you can see by the actual blue box. Um, the Honeywell one, the 5800 Mini, has a red daughter board card, and the 2 gig Versa uh, has a yellow daughter board card in it. So right now I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to pop the cover, show you guys how to get the serial number in case you want to confirm whenever you guys are learning it in, and how to just make sure what sensor it actually is. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the box, and uh, I'm going to take out the sensor, and I'll show you guys right now how to pop the cover. All right, so first thing you're going to need is a flathead, um, nothing too big, just the perfect size. There's little, there's about three little slots on the side of the sensor. Uh, you can see I've already tried popping the cover off, so it kind of like damaged the plastic a little bit. Um, and then there's one on the very top. So what you're going to do is you're going to try to pop at least two of them out. So you put the flathead flat in, twist it, uh, excuse me. Flathead in, you're going to twist, and that pops one side off. And then if you pop the second one off, then it should pretty much, the rest should come off very easily. Now, if you look at the inside, you'll see it has the blue daughter board card. That is the serial number, Alpha 3, 4, Delta 61. And it comes with a CR2032 uh, lithium coin battery. All right, so if you guys are ever looking at replacing batteries, all you guys have to do is pop the sensor open and you guys can actually get the model right off the battery and replace it like that. I'm going to go ahead and put the cover back on. We've confirmed the serial number. Um, popping the cover off is also going to be another method that you can use to learn the sensor in. I'll show you guys that as well when we get to that in the video. Uh, but first, to learn the sensor in, we have to get the panel into programming mode. All right. So, Easy thing about this panel and the sensors is that they have an auto enrollment mode an auto enrollment mode feature. All you have to do is put the panel in learning mode, pop the sensor or fault the sensor, and the panel automatically brings in the serial number and we can actually confirm it uh, with the sticker on the inside of the daughter board. So I'm gonna go ahead and wake up my screen. Ooh, that was a little too fast. So uh, first thing, to get into programming mode, you're going to hit the little gray button up at the very top of the IQ2. You're going to go to settings. Right now, it's giving me an error because I don't have my panel connected to Wi-Fi. If you have yours connected, you will not see this screen. I'm just going to hit OK to skip past this. I'm going to go to advanced settings. To go into programming, to learn in sensors, you need to have your installer code or your dealer code. The default codes that come with this system are 1111 or 2222. 
you or your company may have changed it, so you want to make sure you are using the correct code. So I'm going to use 1111. Go to Installation, Devices, Security Sensors, and this is where before actually learning the sensor, I want, I'm going to show you guys how to confirm uh, what panel it is you guys actually have. All right. Um, so I'm going to go to Add Sensor, and if you want to confirm which panel it is you have, you see where it says Source. If you open up that drop down, it's going to give you the, the frequency that it has. So you see this one says 319. It's actually 319.5, but they're just kind of abbreviating it. Um, so it, it is a, a 319 uh, panel. If you guys have the Honeywell one, you guys will actually see it says 345. And if you guys have DSC, you'll see it says 433. All right. Um, so that just confirms that we do have the panel with the Interlogix and Quolsus daughter board card in it. So I can go ahead and back out of this now. Um, and I'm going to do the easiest learning method, which is just go to Auto Learn Sensor. It says uh, it is now in a learning mode. Once you go into an Auto Learn, once you go into that menu, it, the panel is now listening for frequencies from different sensors. As you see there, this one just picked up on a sensor 174 um, zero alpha 2. However, when we looked at the serial number, that was not the case for this number. So it's picking up on a different sensor that's probably being opened up somewhere around the office. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit cancel because that's not the one I want to learn in. If you see, I'll actually put the magnet close to this one. I'll fault it. And now the serial number is exactly the one that we had seen earlier, 614 Delta Alpha 3. That's the one that was on the sticker on the inside of the sensor. If you want to confirm it, again, all you have to do, pop the cover off. Give me one second. And you guys will actually see. Give me one moment. Six one four Delta Alpha three. So that's actually a little bit weird. The serial number that the sensor is picking up has the exact characters. It's just in a different order. Um, so I'm wondering if the sticker on this sensor was printed incorrectly, but it does have all the exact same characters. Um, we're going to go ahead and hit OK for now because that this is the sensor we want to work with. Um, now, th when you go into this programming screen, it is going to give you different options that you can play around with. So for instance, the first thing you're going to want to do is, again, just confirm that sensor ID. Let me actually confirm, see if it's the same that was on this right now. Yeah, so again, you'll see here, it still has the same characters, it's just in a different order. I'm thinking it was a misprint for this sensor, um, but it did learn in when I did fault the sensor or open up the cover tamper. Um, and I'll actually show you guys at the end of this video that the sensor does work with the system. Uh, so the first thing you're going to want to switch or, or leave and confirm that it's set to is a sensor type. Now this is a door window sensor that I'm working with, so normally I would leave it as a door window, but I do want to show you guys your, your different options if you're learning in different sensors. You have motions, glass breaks, key fobs, keypad, auxiliary pendant, smoke detector, CO detector, um, a whole bunch of different options. Obviously, we're working with the door window, so I'm going to leave it as the default door window. The sensor group, it is defaulted to the sensor group 10. So an entry exit normal delay. So an entry exit door is something that you, let's say uh, a front door. Whenever you enter the house, you need a timer to start so you can get to the panel so you can disarm it without having an alarm go off right away. That may cause false alarms if you set it to a perimeter. Um, if you're putting this on a window, you may want to set this to instant perimeter DW, so door window. Um, you'll see here they also have the entry exit long delay. So if you're putting this on a roll up garage door or on an exterior garage door that you have to get through and it's halfway around the house and you need a longer time, um, this sensor would uh, give you that longer time. 
um, I'm sorry, when you're coming in through the door that's further away, you need more time to get to the panel. So you would set it to a longer delay. Instant interior door. This is uh, basically the system go, the, the sensor is armed as a perimeter only when it's in away mode. And uh, it actually follows any entry exit delays. So if you guys arm it away, you guys walk in through the front door, let's say like the garage exterior door, and you guys have to go in through the garage interior door. Um, if you have this as an instant interior delay, since you open up that garage exterior, which had an entry exit hopefully on it, then this would follow that entry exit delay period. If somebody just breaks into the garage and opens up this door without faulting an entry exit first, then it makes the alarm go off right away. Now, I usually like to stick to the normal sensor group 10, which is the normal entry exit delay, or sensor group 13, perimeter. This is just normally what we work with. I'm gonna program this in as a window just to show you guys. Um, I'm gonna change the sensor name. I can do front door. It kind of gives you a couple of different options here, but if you wanna enter in your custom description, you can go ahead and do that as well. Like, let's say I wanted to enter in Alarm grid, hit the green check. Now, if I ever fault the sensor, or if the alarm goes off, the sensor will report as alarm grid. That's the name I gave the sensor. You can change the chime if you want. There's a lot of different options in here. I'm gonna leave it as high wire, which again is the defaulted. You can enable or disable the voice prompts. So if you don't want this sensor to announce the name alarm grid every single time, you can actually switch it to off. It'll still chime, but it just won't do the voice enunciation. Um, and the security source we're gonna leave as 319. Give me just one second here. So yeah. So we're gonna go ahead, add new. Sensor added successfully. And we're gonna back out to the home screen by hitting the home button on the bottom uh, taskbar. And now you'll see if I put my magnet close to the sensor and I fault it, it'll say alarm grid open. All right, and you'll see the little link right here is letting us know that it's opened. If I go ahead and close it, it should disappear and now it's no longer active. But if you do go to all, this is where you can actually take a look at all of your sensors. So if you have a bunch of sensors, they'll all appear here. And the ones that are open will show that broken circuit or the broken um, link right there. And again, if you close it, it'll close. Now, I set this as a window and I set it as a, as a perimeter, which means while the system is armed and if I s fault it, even while it's arming, it will cause the alarm to go off. Take a look. So let's just arm the system. system let's just say I do an arm away. This is a perimeter, which means whether the system is in an arm mode or arming states, if I trip it right now while it's in the countdown, you'll see the alarm will go off. All right, so the sensor works. Um, it is armed as a perimeter. You can obviously change this to an entry exit if you're putting it on your front door, back door, side doors, or anything like that. Um, but this was just a quick video on how to learn in the, the <laughs> Versa G Interlogix sensor. If you guys have any questions, feel free to email us at support at If you found the video helpful, make sure you hit like underneath, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and enable notifications so whenever we upload new content, you guys get notified. I'm George and I'll see you guys next time.